So I am decided to quilt one of my samples, uh, a sample up of my whole cloth feather medallion. And I see a lot of people that um, don't understand how to load a smaller piece onto a quilt frame. So I thought I would do part of this on the quilt frame and then on the long arm and then I'm probably going to end up taking it and doing the rest maybe on my stationary machine. But so basically what you're going to do is you're going to load your backing, a larger piece of backing as you normally would. So I have my backing loaded and then I'm just going to lay my batting down and my fabric on top of that, my, my top fabric. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll secure it. I'll baste up the side, across the top, down the other side, and then I'll start quilting. So let's get started and I'll show you how we're gonna work this. Okay, so I've secured the back. I've basted around the edges, the top, then down the sides. And I've gone ahead and put my ruler foot on my machine just in case I decide to use a ruler to guide me along these areas here. I just feel like I might need that to get that exact curve instead of trying it free motion. If I was on my domestic machine, I might try it just without the ruler, but for this particular video, I'm gonna go ahead and probably do, do it with the ruler. Now, I'm gonna start if I was on my domestic machine, I would definitely start in the middle and I would work my way out. And I still might do that on the even for this particular video. If I was working in a larger quilt that I was gonna be rolling back and forth a lot, I definitely would baste a lot of this down. But I feel like <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start in the middle and I'm gonna work my way up so I can get that part quilted. I've also chosen to use a pink thread so I'm using pink Superior Thread So Fine 50. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want that to show up for you in the video. So hopefully that helps. Something I always like to do is have a little piece of scrap fabric off to the side of the quilt. And then I'm gonna, pre I'm gonna check my tension there. So I'm gonna bring my bobbin thread up Take a couple little tacking stitches and then run it. And then I just check the underside of it. And it's looking pretty good, so we're set to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start in the middle. Needle down, needle up. Bring that bobbin thread up to the top. Take a couple little tacking stitches. And then go ahead, and like I said, I'm just using this ruler to sort of guide me to make sure I stay somewhat on that line. But again, these lines are water soluble, so if you wobble off of that line, don't worry about it because those those lines will come right off, and it'll look it'll look just fine. Okay, there's one done. Now, this intersection has. A separate section inside so I'm gonna to have to break my thread and do those separately so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the outside sections first and I wobbled a little bit there I'm not gonna worry about it
Okay, I think I've changed my mind. I don't think I'm gonna break thread and jump to that section. I think I'm gonna find a way to do it without doing that, just so you can see how you can modify this if you'd like to modify it. So I'm just gonna start in that center and I'm gonna go up to that line and back. So there it is, not perfect, but that's okay. sections done and again didn't stay right on the lines but the, remember those lines are going to go away so it's still going to all look good now something else that you can think about doing and um, I might go back and do this at a later date you could fill in here and with some some other design if you wanted if you wanted to add that I think I'm going to go ahead and quilt these feathers on the inside before I move on to the next section so if you've never done feathers like that, let me show you real quick how they go. Also, I do have a feather sampler practice panel that goes through all different sorts of panels. And I also have a feather free motion practice workbook. So um, there are always things out there that can help you. So here is, I'm just going to do it in a triangle here just so you can get a feel for how that works. So the first thing you're gonna do is do a little teardrop, and then you're gonna come out and swing around and bump into that. Then you're gonna bump back on that same line, and you're gonna go around. So it's bump, bump back, out and around. Bump, bump back, out and around. Bump, bump back, out and around. Okay, hopefully that helped you. Again, if you can't get them as little as that or as, as, as many in there as I have drawn in there, feel free to do it however you want to do it. I mean, you don't have to follow that. Okay, so let's quilt a couple and see how it goes. So because this is a little bit smaller, I'm gonna go ahead and bump my stitch count up to 13 stitches per inch. So I'm gonna make my first little teardrop. Okay, and in these, I only have one teardrop. And that one teardrop, both of those feathers are off of that first little teardrop. So there's only one teardrop in each section. So then we're gonna come along here, we're gonna bump, come back, out and around. back down that line to get to the other side. So that turned out pretty good. Um, again, it's not perfect, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect because those lines are going to go away. So let's do this side. So we're going to bump, bump back, bump around. Let's try this one over here. So the first little teardrop. Back 
So see, that all looked pretty good. I didn't always stay on the line, but it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish quilting these and you can just watch. So there you see, I got it all quilted. It looks really nice. I can't wait until those lines can go away and you can see how it looks. Um, I've also seen other people take this panel and in this space in here, where there's kind of background negative space, I've seen them quilt that in with just um, some really fine background fill. Um, and that makes those feathers really pop forward. So I'm using a couple different rulers here. One of them is mine. It's called the Curvy Medium Ruler by Stitch by Stitch Custom Quilting. And now I'm also going to use this one, which is called the BFF Ruler, and it's from the Quilted Pineapple. So I use lots of different kinds of rulers. Um, so you might see me using different ones throughout this video. So I got that first channel done. I'm going to go ahead and break my thread and I'm going to start and do the second side of the channel. And then we can move on to this channel here and get these feathers done. Okay, so now I'm going to do these channels here. And I think I'm going to see when I'm going to do the feathers. I might go ahead and do the one channel side first and then go along and do the feather. But let me see how that's going to work out. because I got the one side done, I'm gonna go ahead and try and do the feathers. The only thing I have to remember is each of the feathers start in this point. So again, you're gonna do that little teardrop. You're gonna do the first little teardrop and then you're gonna work your way out. And then I have to come back and do the teardrop and do it this way. So it's gonna take a little bit to get around that whole, that whole section. You could very easily stop and break your thread. I'm gonna try not to do that. bring me back
so there's that one first section done then I'm going to travel around and get to this next section I'm going to keep on working my way around So there you go, that whole section is now done on that side. So now I kind of have to go out and I have to do the outside channel and then work in these feathers here. And these feathers are a little different and I'll explain that to you in a minute. these I could stop here and do this feather but I think what I'm going to do because this line here because of all the traveling showed up darker I'm going to go around totally once and then I'll come back and I'll fill those in because that travel line will make that line darker also okay so I made my way around one time now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do these so with this type of raw feather, it's going to start in the middle and it's going to go outwards. So bump, bump back, out and around, bump, bump back, out and around. And then on the other side, it's going to do the same bump, bump back, out and around bump bump back out and around now when i'm typically doing that feather i'm not worried about what's happening on either side is making sure there's the same amount of feathers i'm basically just trying to fill in the space okay with this one we have to start in the middle so i've traveled there we're going to do our first little teardrop i'm going to get rid of some of those threads for right now Okay, and then we'll just get started. So I'm gonna do my first one, second, and it's back. Bump, bump back, up and around, bump, bump back, up and around. And then I'm gonna travel over to that middle, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. See, I'm not always perfectly on the line. So you can see there are many places I missed the line. I'm not going to worry about that because once those lines go away, it's not going to matter. So I'll do one more and then I'll go ahead and stitch the other ones. First little teardrop. Front, front back, front around. Okay, so 
so that's two of them. And I'm just going to make my way around the quilt and do the rest of them. that whole row done all the way around that being said if you decide that you want to change anything up in here maybe you don't like that kind of a feather maybe you want to do something different in there feel free you can change it up and make it your own and do whatever it is that you'd like to do in there those lines will go away you don't need to worry about it all right so the next section will be we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this arc right here because that's already attached to this level here and i can get that done pretty easily before I have to break thread and switch out to the next section. So I've gone around here once, I think because some of these channel area lines are um, double or triple lines, I'm going to go ahead and try and quilt over that again at um, once I get done the other section. I also think if you can see here on this, this kind of starts on the inside and it creates an echo all the way around. So I'm going to have to break my thread, go in here and quilt all the way around and then quilt the feather. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you could easily join it down here and just come up to the echo and then echo it around. There's no right or wrong, it's gonna be your piece, so you feel free to do what you wanna do with it. But I think I am going to go ahead and break my thread and start each one individually. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna quilt the outside of that first. And remember, manipulating the ruler is fine because sometimes you have to turn it to make it go and hit right on that line. Okay, so there's one side. I'm going to come back down. So there I did that outline and I'm just going to go ahead and start my feather. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the side, bump, bump back, bump around. Now 
these feathers are better if started from the bottom. And in fact, I've never been able to get them from the top down. So I always start this particular formal feather from the bottom up. Okay, and there's that feather there too. So you can see how that turned out. And the same thing with this one over here. So it turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of these going all the way around the quilt. And then when we come back, we'll be done pretty much. Um, because then at that point, we're gonna talk about what to do for a background. So I've decided to go around this outer stitch line a second time to make it a little bit darker. So I'm just traveling over top of the previous stitch line and I'm being very careful about how I stitch and where the stitch line is. And sometimes I'm not hitting right on so I might have to go back a little bit and that's okay too. Okay, so here this is all stitched out. You can see, I'll give you a close up. So there's a good amount of background space on this and you have to decide, do you wanna cut it down smaller and make it smaller or do you wanna go ahead and leave it the size that it is? So for this, I'm gonna leave it the size that it is, but I am gonna change thread colors because I think I want the background work to um, blend in with the fabric. So I'm gonna to change to a white thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll meet you back here. So the first thing I've decided I wanna do is I'm going to echo with my blending thread this out here. I'm gonna go about the width of my hopping foot because I know that's about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get set up for that. So I'm gonna use a ruler for this part, but you wouldn't have to. You could barely, very easily free motion this, or if you're uncomfortable doing a free motion echo with a, you know, like a making it exact, then do kind of like a wiggle line that goes around all the way around. That would kind of be fun um, and take it from there. Um, so yeah, so let's actually, let's, let's do that. Let's see how that looks. So there you go, there's the first one. Looks pretty good, so we'll just keep on going around.
Okay, so we got that all the way around. Sort of added a little bit of motion to it, so I like that. Okay, so let's talk about what we might wanna do for the background fill. There's a couple different options you have. You could actually quilt your own arcs in between them and make them their own petals all the way around. In between here, you could add petals or you could add leaves or really whatever you wanted to do to that. You could divide this up um, maybe with a diagonal line going from one corner all the way up to the other corner and then do it again the opposite way and do something different in each side or even divide it up and just have some straight lines coming in so that it looks like all lines are coming into the middle, which is what I might end up doing because I have the sample that I did on the black free motion panel that has a background fill in it. So maybe the straight lines would be the way to go for this. I think if I do the straight lines, I might echo all the way around one more time and then we'll add some straight lines. And they're not really like uh, straight lines that would be done with a the ruler. They're more of a kind of what I call a curvy straight line, which is kind of like this, a line that comes in and before it meets that seam line or that stitch line, it turns and it comes back out. And so you end up with lines pointing in and on each side, and then you'll end up with a, something different, um, a different kind of look. So let's try that and see what happens. Another thought I had on completing this is you could even just keep on echoing all the way out until you get to the edge. And that way you filled in, you know, fairly easily by just adding that echo all the way around. That would be a fun thing to do too. And like I said, add your own elements if you want. Um, I, I'm going to show you later one that was done um, quite differently than this from somebody who um, purchased my panel and then posted pictures on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to do this, what I call the curvy straight line. And um, I kind of use my ruler just as a guide. I'm not really resting against it too much, but I also want my ruler to slide very easily. So I'm not using the grip tape side. If the grip tape side was down, it would make it hard for me to, to shift the ruler along. So I'm going to use it with the grip tape up and then you'll see as I just shift my ruler along. Touching that stitch line ahead, um, up, right up above it, I'm turning it before. It ends. If I were doing this on my domestic machine or my stationary long arm, I probably would mark with some kind of marking utensil, some straight lines in there to use as registration. And I'd probably do it free motion without the ruler. But that way it gives me a guide because I have a tendency to let my lines start drifting over to the right. So this would, those, those reminder lines would keep me in track of keeping the lines going straight up and down.
Okay, so that's the first side done. Pretty easy. I think it's pretty gonna be pretty effective because it's gonna point into the middle. So let me show you over here. My fabric isn't square, so this line isn't coming down to the end to this corner. It's coming over some. I will square this up after the fact, so I am going to bring the design all the way out because I'm not exactly sure where that squaring up will happen. Also making sure that these lines these registration lines here are even with the side so that way I'm keeping my line straight okay so here it is all quilted out looks really good I'm really happy with it I'm gonna take it off the long arm I'm gonna square it up I'll add binding and then I'll go ahead and soak it and let those lines go away and then I'll show you how it turned out. Remember, I did this one on the long arm, but others I have done on my stationary machine. So if you need to see things on a stationary machine, just hop over to one of my other videos and I'll also be doing my feather practice panel on my stationary machine so you can see how I work at moving the fabric instead of moving the machine. 